The simplest way to select objects in 3ds Max is to use the selection tool on the main toolbar and then click on an object in any viewport. The object turns white in wireframe views and the selection brackets surround the selected object in the shaded view. In the shaded view, you click anywhere on the surface of the object to select it. In wireframe view, you need to click on a wire part as a hollow part does not work. Selecting this way works on one object at a time. That means selecting a new object deselects a previous one. To deselect all objects, click on an empty area of the viewport. To make multiple selections, hold down the control key and add to the selection by clicking more objects in the scene. In fact, you'll notice a little plus sign that appears next to the cursor when you press control. To deselect objects, hold down the alt key a minus sign appears, and then click on the selected object to remove it from the selection. When the objects you want to select are close together, it's easier to use a region selection. By default, this region is defined by a rectangular area and is achieved with a click and drag. All objects contained within or crossed over by the rectangular region become selected. We refer to this mode as crossing mode. You can turn region selection into window mode. In window mode, only objects fully contained inside the region borders are selected. You can toggle between window and crossing mode with the click of a button. Aside from a rectangular region, you also have a set of other shapes to choose from. A circular region, a fence region, which you start with a click and drag, then click away to create the shape of your choice. There's also a lasso region, which works with a click and drag, just like in Photoshop and other graphics applications. And finally, there's a paint selection tool that selects anything the brush touches. Typically, this is a tool mostly used for selecting vertices rather than entire objects. Let's set regions to rectangle again and select crossing mode before we move on. Keep in mind that Control and Alt work equally well when selecting objects with region selection. Control to add to the selection and Alt to remove from the selection. When a scene becomes very cluttered with objects, it's easier to select an object by its name. This can be done by using the Select from Scene dialog, which you can access on the main toolbar or by pressing H on the keyboard. In this dialog, click the name header to list the names alphabetically. You can select one object or select many at a time with the help of the control key. A click and drag selects objects that are alphabetically ordered. If anything, this dialog underlines the importance of giving objects descriptive names. In this case, let's select all parts of the helicopter, then select all three jeeps and then exit the dialog. When you have a selection of objects that you know you need to repeat at a later time, you can create a relationship between these objects in a variety of ways, using selection sets, groups, layers, and so on. For now, we'll take a look at selection sets. So with the helicopter and jeep selected, let's type a name in this drop-down menu on the main toolbar, and we'll call it Vehicles, and then press Enter. Typing a name creates the selection set. At this time, we can deselect all objects in the scene. We can still reselect them one by one if we want to, but the easiest way to select them again as a group is by recalling their selection set. And they are all instantly selected again. The Scene drop-down menu is also accessible from the Select from Scene dialog. This is a very handy tool to catalog objects that go together, and selection sets are saved with the file so you don't have to recreate them every time you open the scene. 